In the summer of 2004, a small band with a big sound ascended upon the Euro metal scene. Lingering in the bayous of New Orleans since the late 80s, those slow and heavy riffs had been reverberating in the hearts and souls of the real hardcore for years. With time comes change. But some things never change. Ab 15.30 Uhr da drüben die Heat im COS Cup losgehen. Mit weltberühmten Fahrern aus Brasilien, ganz Europa, Südamerika und so weiter. Wisst Bescheid, COS Cup da drüben. Und jetzt viel Spaß mit Krober! Fucking right, baby! This is Krober from New Orleans. It's an honor to be back at the With Four Force. We're gonna kick your ass. I'll never lose the scores you give Oh look, I'm gonna live in peace I'll carry anguish to the grave Frustration that I can't believe yeah. Self-inflicted Just to your small and cost me dead The no wind that you no longer hear I see you doing as I sleep Wish you could leave it up Self-inflicted Pick it up, shell and yeah
Wash it all, wash it all, wash it all away In the dead, in my skills Smothering, smothering to get out from me Tortured and dread Forever for a dread Love burning in my head I am forever Get me, go on me, dig it out of hell Lord, torture and dread Forever for a dread Lord, I'm burning in my head I'm broken down the wall and style Stop Thank you. We're gonna sip a beer. This is uh, Kirk Winstein. I'm the lead singer for Crowbar.
in about uh, late 88, uh, me and Jimmy Bauer, who I play with in, in Down right now, kind of came up with the whole concept for Crowbar. Ladies and gentlemen, James Bauer III, uh, the originator with me of Crowbar. Uh, Jim? I met Kirk when uh, he was in this band called Victorian Blitz, and I played in this band Shell Shock, and he got in the band, make a long story short, he got in the band, and uh, and me and Kirk clicked, and first night, first night that I actually really, uh, don't go, to, don't go there, folks. Okay, never mind. <laughs> me and you uh, basically, you know, creating the, or coming up with the concept of what Crowbar is. Yeah, well, we, we, we had been in that band Aftershock together and all that, and that, that was kind of like dissipating or whatever, just kind of falling apart. And me and Kirk were, me and you, were totally into <laughs> like, we were all in, a, you know, like you said, the Melvins and Carnivore and stuff like that. And you know, it was right in the right in the time where if you didn't play fast, nobody was really into it. Right. You know, so uh, we just we took those two influences and combined them together, and it was it was really cool because it was it was so fresh. It was like so different from what both me and Kirk had ever done. A local band called Exhorter, and we're just a fantastic thrash, you know, speed metal, like in the vein of Slayer or something, tight band, and they were, you know, the kings of the New Orleans scene, and they, they ripped, I mean, it's great stuff, and me and Jimmy kind of looked at each other, I'm like, dude, I can fucking look like that, you know, so we kind of intentionally went the whole opposite direction, and the stuff we were listening to, the Sabbath and the Melvins and stuff like that was kind of low-tuned, but we kind of did it as a joke, even. And tune the guitar all the way down to B, which back in 1988 was kind of unheard of. So that kind of helped create, you know, the sound that we do. Like our thing was tune low, play slow, because everybody else was playing 100 miles an hour away up on the fretboard. So we tuned the fucking thing as low as it would go, and just, you know, just kind of try to do the opposite, just to kind of basically stand out. Fueled by the down-tuned sludge of the Melvins and the over-the-top aggression of Pete Steele's Carnivore, Crowbar's sound was soon labeled Doomcore by the European press after their debut release in 1992. My influences on Crowbar, you know, like the Melvins and Carnivore and Black Sabbath and whatnot, but I really don't, I rarely listen to that. I listen to pop music and, you know, like Sade is one of my favorites and Seal and, uh, just, you know, a lot of classic 70s rock, a lot of the mellow stuff. Uh, is It's a bigger influence to me, even though you can't hear it in the Crowbar sound at all, because Crowbar is loud, heavy, you know, doomy, whatever. But to me, in my head, I hear it, and it's a bigger influence than most of the heavy stuff is to me. Uh, I mean, I told myself a long time ago, you, you can't learn how to write good songs and how to sing or listen to death metal or whatever, although I'm a fan of that style of music. You know, if you want to write a good song, you better listen to something more melodic. Yeah, basically, there's three elements, you know, to the to, to crowbar. is that too low, play slow, and the acknowledgement of the melodies in 70s love songs. There you, you know, me and Kirk, we're, we're always been in the 70s love songs. And <laughs> Together. Totally, you know. On tour, everything. Take another pill, dude. You're itching your nuts off. <laughs> a definite departure from the high pitched glam rock of the time, Crowbar, above all else, was real. The hardcore fans couldn't get enough. Their second album sold over 100,000 copies. The following had begun. The original band actually was a three piece for a bit. I mean, me and Jim, Jim Bauer started it, and Jimmy had left and moved to Atlanta for a couple of years, uh, and I got Craig Ninnemacher, who plays in Black Label Society with Zach Wild now, uh, to come in on drums, and he played on the first three full-length records and an EP that we put on a live EP. And uh, then Jim came back into the fold. It was kind of like, we've always had a revolving door of guys. It's always been friends. The, be the beginning was Big T, uh, for, for the old fans will know. Be like 400 pound guy on bass, myself on guitar and vocals. Kevin Noonan was on guitar and Craig was on drums. And Kevin left, we got Matt Thomas in. And I mean, I can't even remember all, all the guys, honestly. But it's kind of been a revolving door and a lot of the guys have been in and out. 
it's never like I've always told uh, people have asked, you know, in interviews or whatever. I'm like, no one, we've had like 20 fucking dudes in a band, but I've never kicked anyone out of Crowbar. They've left because, you know, they wanted to pursue something else or go play in a different band or whatever. And it ain't easy doing it at the level we do it. We don't make a lot of cake. It's, you got to struggle. It's hard. And everybody's not cut out for it. But no one's ever been kicked out like, you know, this guy sucks or he's a dick or whatever. Nothing like that ever happened. We just simply, like, people would come to a certain point in their life and go, you know what, I don't know if I can uh, dedicate myself to this any longer. So I'm going to tell Kirk, you know, bye and, you know, give him a hug and a kiss and say good luck. And two years from now, you know, if, if we miss a drummer or something, you want to come back in, come back in. It's cool. Jimmy Bowen's been in and out of the band 20 fucking times. <laughs> and I play with him down, you know, I talk to him every day. He's one of my best buds. But if he feels like he's at a point in his life where he can't handle the load of, of being a full-time committed drummer to Crowbar, then he goes, and that's fine. And somebody else comes in, and if, if the guy that came in, you know, the, the guy that comes in, if he don't quit, Jimmy ain't coming back. But if the guy leaves, you know, I'll call Jim, come on back, dude. You know, it's, it's just, it's cool. I mean, a lot of people have made a lot of pretty cool comments over the years about the New Orleans scene. We're the exact opposite of, like, the L.A., Hollywood, the old thing, you know, old... 70s, 80s, it, it is, there's no competition. Nobody's in fucking competition here. We're all trying to play music because we love it. And New Orleans, for whatever reason, we've all embraced each other in our own little circle of friends and, and, and a brotherhood that we like to call it. And uh, it's respect for each other. And we do, you know, we'll do whatever we can to help out each other. And I think it's... There's a, there are other scenes like you know like the East Coast uh, New York scene and all that with the hardcore bands that, that do the same thing, but in general I think uh, that's something that's missing from the whole music world. I mean think about it.
came out in 91 or 92, it was called Obedience Through Suffering. Uh, we followed that up with Crowbar Crowbar. We had uh, a live EP called Live Plus One. We did uh, Time Heals Nothing, Broken Glass, uh, Odd Fellows Rest, Equilibrium, Sonic Excess in its purest form, and the latest one we did uh, was entitled uh, Life's Blood for the Downtrodden.
Gagashin, motherfuckers! Thank you, man. It feels great. Fucking great to be back here. It's hot as fucking hell in New Orleans, and it's this beautiful weather. Bunch of motherfuckers drinking beer and playing metal. What else could you ask for? <laughs> fucking right, baby. We got a uh, new record coming out in January called Life's Blood for the Downtrodden. It'll be on Candlelight. This is our track number one. We're going to try a new one out on you, so let us know if it's worth a fucking on. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let's keep it rolling. We ain't got much time.
<laughs> After seven albums, a more mature Crowbar recorded its latest record, Life's Blood for the Downtrodden. Focusing on other projects, Kirk took a two and a half year hiatus before recruiting Crowbar's latest lineup. I never auditioned anybody. I mean, the lineup we have now, I called Tommy, I called Pat, I called Steve. You want the gig? Sure, I want it. You're in. Let's, uh, we'll practice it next Tuesday. Click. 2004 is when I joined. Uh, we used to hang out in Pat's Pub in Fat City, a place we call Fat City here in town. And Pat Good finally fun. called me up one day and said, hey man, would you like to play bass? I said, fuck, what you asked me six years ago? And, uh, <laughs> Shit, me and Kirk's been friends for probably about 19, 20 years now. And um, I actually met him through some other friends of a band that I was in at the time. And yeah, he had Pat to call me. He, uh, he got Pat to call me up, and Pat and I asked me, you know, we are just kind of kicking our hands, joking around, but Pat was like, hey, man, you know, would, you want to come jam with the old man? We would, uh, would, would throw him on what? And I was like, man, I said, the old rock for sure, you know? I said, I think that's a killer idea. I said, Basically, if Kurt would have asked me probably five to ten years ago, I would have said, yeah, five to ten years ago. And he would have never had to go through all, all these crazy drummers. I believe I was in New Orleans visiting Kirk, and he had expressed an interest in me uh, joining the band. My, my initial reaction, I think, was, well, you know, do you want me to audition? Or, you know, what's the deal, you know? And he's like, no, fool, you're in the fucking band. All right. Ready to hit the road and lay down the law, Crowbar toward Europe. We could be officially in the biggest shithole yet. Apparently that's the word around. That's the word out on the town. My fucking balls feel like a swollen <laughs> pair of ice cubes on the Alaskan fucking uh, Bering Sea coastline. <laughs> <laughs> you got two uh, weed heads freezing them. Hold up another one, man. <laughs> what? Their feet don't touch the ground, so, you know, they, they don't... <laughs> My feet feel like two chunks fucking, like, fucking I got years of, years of concrete shoes with their fucking mid eyes. There's a big misconception about what it's really like to play rock music for a living. And I blame it all on Poison and VH1 and Motley Crue for letting everyone's wives, girlfriends, sisters, uh, by lovers and whatnot, see the behind the music crap. Like everyone has a preconceived notion that when you go on tour, you got money, you know, popping out of your eyeballs. There's chicks everywhere. It's great. You're never tired. You're never sick. You don't have to travel. Everything's great. It's. It couldn't be any more opposite. And it's. It's like a letdown in a weird way. But uh, I, I think it's important, really, to just say that. Um, Especially at the level we do it, you know, we do it because we love it, and it's it ain't what you see on TV. It's you know, what's it what's the saying? It's all done with smoke and mirrors. Well, that's what you see on VH1, but that ain't real. <laughs> We're in um, Cork, Ireland, so we'll take you on tour of the pub here in a second. As soon as we get a buzz rocket. Ready to rock it? Uh -huh. uh. 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 Jeez. <laughs> Am I too big? I don't know. They must have knew him and Kirk were coming today. It's like strumming, but it's fucking. It's pop, man. It's doing all these bass rolls. This is great to see back. So he gained a couple of rubbish. <laughs> 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 
Robbie. Robbie, darling. Robbie. Bye bye. <laughs> Give me a. Oh, wow! I don't know. We'll, we're gonna find out. <laughs> you are Yorks fish? It's kind of like a. Guess we're hanging here. Bug man. The weed hound. Hey man, we need to get. Hey, speaking of, Darren. Make sure you don't make any noise after eleven. You know. What's up? Oh really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, play a few numbers for Awesome. real food eating man. That's good. Look at it again. Buckley's like, it's adding up. It's adding up. Guys. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Shit, she cleaned up all these beards. I don't know why I get so much joy out of that, but I do. It's more fun. Dude, this is gonna be crazy. Oh, man, gonna We're that. gonna get so much. I'm gonna have to say it. Dave Windorf OD. Robbie Six. Robbie. What happened? Um, Daltry. Rob, 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 Rob. Rob. We can't get, uh... <clears throat> what does that mean? Bugger off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bugger off! <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Bugger off! What does that mean? Bugger off! What does that mean? Bugger off! Bugger off! Bugger off! Yes, but... <laughs> oh! <laughs> but... Um, Dude, this is gonna be no, killing. I'm gonna charge it, but... It's just, where we're we gonna get... We're gonna get... We're gonna get... Get there for like eight. Yeah, yeah, I told them, yeah. Raggle's wig. Well, they not, well, they'll continue. Bird is wig. Robbie, used to be Robbie Six, now he's Gallagher. Well, the Gallagher brothers from Oasis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I said, Darren Tom, this is the ladies and gentlemen. Darren yeah, doing yeah. business. Live and direct from London. Wow! Wow! I make the singing for darkness sound like Dio. <laughs> what is it? The first line hit me like a kick in the face. I had to do another one just in case. Dude. There's, there's like, my, my partner in crime, Mr. Shit. Justin Farin. Love letter. Love letter from Jost. Oh, Jost, I love you. Bring <laughs> We'll be traveling out together. We'll get there, get all the equipment in, and then you can go off and do what you need to do. Gibbs' head is literally the size of Thailand. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool, man. Don't panic. <laughs> oh, wow. We'll have to get at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Look out! About 10 -ish. About ten o'clock at Plastic Head. I can see him totally bit of a <laughs> <laughs> race on his tights. Now he's, now he's, dude, I've been on the protein food rate the whole time. I'm tour. so glad he ain't gone here. No protein at 1,100 grams of fat per hour. <laughs> Nick. I'm so glad Nick isn't driving you around. Who's really Nick? Good. He's the other guy driving Will Hayden. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm glad too, because we want we want uh, oh, he's a bit he's got a Robbie Gallagher. It's, it's, well, it's the same band, but it's just. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, zero on the hairdo of one uh, six. He doesn't have fucking Robbie six. It's, it's Robbie six. Literally transformed. Look, no, stay, stay like that. The side view is absolutely Robert. Robert. Roger Daltrey from like the Marquee Club in like 66 <laughs> on a Tuesday night for two quid to get in, mate. <laughs> March of 05, we did uh, like 12 shows with Hate Breed in the UK, and after that we had uh, one day off, woo, and then uh, immediately went into our own like got a tour in Europe for a couple of weeks. And the highlight of the tour had to be Pat, our bassist, the AKA the Caniac. Uh, we did all I had, I gave, which is probably like you know our hit, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and. Uh, <laughs> 
hit, I could feel his cables wrapped around my legs. I go to sing, uh, you know, jam, and I sing. I just hear this thud, and I kind of look over to the side, and the Kaniac had, you know, basically went face down on it. And I, I stopped, and I'm like, Tom, oh, Tom, oh, you know, let's, let, let's let y'all get your money this worth at least. Let's start over, whatever. And dude, the funny part wasn't that he fell, but I've done that. We've all done it, you know. He was, it was like, you know, Oprah's wig came off. Or so, you know, he was so upset and just, you know, like embarrassed. And I'm like, dude, for God's sake, you know, just settle down, dude. I mean, you fell, so what? At least you didn't break your nose, and it ain't no big deal. And uh, the, the other band down that I play, and I took a spill one night with that. And uh, my thing to Pat, what I told him, I said, dude, I said, you fell. I made a little joke about it. You got a little, you know, a little red ass about it. I said, I'm on, you know, down. I was on stage for a year with um, Philip H. Anselmo. You know, and if I, I mean, in between every song, I'd be like, shut up, asshole. And I get a script to the whole thing. And it's joking. And we're brothers. It's, not, it's like, you know, like when you fight with you, well, fuck you, fuck you. You know, but Pat just, he took it the wrong way, dude. He's a sensitive dude. But uh, lay off the cane. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, you guys have been kind of lame in my department, but still, let's give you some little round of applause tonight, all right? Yeah! I know you can do better, let's hear it, all right, yeah! Three quarters gay, let's hear it, yeah! Thank you! This next song goes out to my very good friend, Mr. Don Bag, Daryl Evan. I love you, baby. This song is for you. You gave it every fucking night of your life, motherfucker, and I love you. For it. CLC in America, which was fantastic. About six and a half weeks, it was CLC Crowbar, Alabama Thunder Pussy, and Weed Eater. And then toward the end of that tour, uh, some, a buddy of mine's band from New Orleans called Suplex opened up the last couple of shows that we did, and that was uh, that went fantastic. And then, as we were anticipating on maybe touring in the fall of '05, uh, we had an unexpected uh, catastrophe called Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> And we, you know, we had we couldn't get into our rehearsal room until t December, for God's sake. So, you know, we had to take a bit of time off from it. I wrote this song in 1992, sitting on my couch in Metairie, Louisiana. So check this baby out.
Today, uh, and I'm not saying they're, you know, influ- I'm not saying they're directly influenced by Crowbar, but whether they know it or not, they are. Because, you know, I mean, I'm 41, and I started this shit 20, I don't know, 18 years ago. For me, at least, and for Avery, one of our, you know, biggest influences, uh, just one of those bands that you know we really connected to early on. Um, you know, getting to be able to open for them and uh, getting to uh, meet Kirk, not only uh, on the Suffocation More of an Angel tour, but also uh, when they were out with Napalm Death. And you know, to me, I mean, all modern metalcore, metal, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, hardcore. I think draws a lot of Crowbar influences. Um, you know, you've heard like. Bands like Killswitch Engage and Unearth, and um, you know, modern, more modern bands. You know, list them as influences, and you know, we're definitely one of those bands as well. Just uh, and, and the, you know, meeting Kirk for the first time was cool. You know, having seen him, you know, having seen Crowbar on uh, uh, Beavis and Butthead and Headbangers Ball, and then have him, you know, treat me like a peer was like one of the coolest experiences for me as, as a kid. And, uh, one tour, me and our, our old drummer Nick, uh, aka Nickel P, we listened to Obedience Through Suffering the, on cassette on our uh, on our first ever tour, you know, in our van, and actually we listened to it so much that it actually got caught in the tape player, and um, you know, I'm sure there's other people out there just like me that have stories like that, but it's just you know they're one of those bands that I just you know, always love, not just because of the lyrics, but, you know, just the all-out heaviness and brutality. And one of the first bands that ever, um, you know, really used uh, such a low tuning, you know, before new Metal, before Korn, um, before, you know, a lot of bands. So, you know, their influence is just, is massive and, you know, props to them. I mean, guys like him, I mean, bands, uh, shoot, I mean, uh, God forbid, and, uh, Kamara. Kamara, big time, guy wears a crowbar hat in the video, or a crowbar shirt, you know, they look guests on MTV. Bands like that, uh, Kill Switch Engage, you know, younger bands, I call them young, you know, was somewhat in- influenced by us, and that makes me feel real good. And they have a total different sound than we do, but something about crowbar influenced them, and, and they're all, you know, a lot more successful than we are. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it could, but hey, man, uh, you know, Jim, you've known me for, uh, what, 71 years? Right, uh, 72. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, I'd rather, I'd have it no other way. This is the way it was supposed to be. We didn't start it to make a million bucks, although it'd be nice.
goes out to Wyson O'Neill. I think that's his name. Also, all you motherfuckers. I'm a man, Guts Gunnerman from fucking Rock Hard. Thanks for the intro, baby.
I'm not gonna take a shit. <laughs> no regrets, just no more for now. That's it. It's harsh to out of his chest. <laughs> if there wasn't a rib cage to stop it, it would fucking blow 20 feet in the air. I'm glad I'm not going to the front. <laughs> For the 15th time, it is the last of the look, tour. Look, look. So I'm a special sale with Robbie Six in the corner. The merchandise, funny shirts are five pounds. Man, get rid of that shit. It's like a damn Roman sale. Get rid of it. Five pounds for fucking t-shirts, ten for one. Steve, buddy. Fill it up. Let's see who did that shit, huh? Uh -oh. <laughs> that was video. Oh, you're not complete, bitch. You're about to be the first one on the next one. I'll be the first one on the next round. Nigga, cause when I walk the roadway, shakes. Ah, oh, double base, promise. <laughs> Beds of Mr. Rattlesnakes! <laughs> Wait till he does a double base. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am! I'm really glad that all that Swiss in hand. Woo! Love Jesus and the devil himself! <laughs> 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 Catch him by candlelight, mate. <laughs> the record label featuring uh, Tara Thompson is a uh, lead, uh, lead drummer. <laughs> I need some blue, and you know it's true. true. <laughs> if not, I might just snort some glue. <laughs> a bit of cane, a bit of fire. <laughs> To quench your thirst for my one desire! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm gonna get really getting fat! Oh, bitch, I got a really crazy head! <laughs> <laughs> lineup of Kirk, Steve, Pat, and Tommy proved to be crushing from the first few chords. The European tour was a big success with the highlight being a storming set at the With Full Force Festival in Leipzig, Germany. God, Brutus, you're ugly. I don't know who these guys are. Who are you guys? Tapak Nurses. Oh, these are, yeah, yeah, you were pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, we're going to have a look at the, the chicks. Leave on, look at the camera, dude. Dude, I'm fucking stressed. <laughs> Calm down. There's Roland. Roland joint. Sexy bastard. Spy for the camera. And we toured over the course of uh, 15 years or something with, I mean, everyone from you know, Pantera and White Zombie and, you know, Paradise Lost, which is a big band in Europe. I mean, we played with Motorhead, we played with, you know, with everybody. And, um, one of the highlights of my whole career 
with Crowbar was definitely the With Full Force Festival we did in Leipzig, East Germany on July 4th, 04. And uh, it was just, you know, a combination of all these years of hard work and everything to build up to that show. It was a great show. The German fans are fantastic. The European fans in general are a lot better than American fans. And that was just like, you know, I mean, I thought to myself, you know, it's a long way from my mom's garage in River Ridge to playing this in Germany. I want to do one more for you guys tonight. Or today, what the fuck am I saying tonight? This is what I'm sure a lot of you know, man. Send it out to all you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It's been a great fucking pleasure to play for you here today. I fucking with full force. Thank you. This motherfucker's call all I had, I gave. Thank you so much, Wolf Ford, with Wolf Ford. You motherfuckers have been great, man. This is fucking crumb off of New Orleans. You take it easy, get drunk. Shadows falls up next in the Mighty Rose Tattoo.
Baltimore is, there's not a whole lot of cake in it. There's not a whole lot of glory. There ain't, you ain't getting laid and all this crap. <laughs> you know, off of playing in, in the band, it's it's all from your heart. It's what we love to do. We create music and we're musicians at heart, and that's what we do. And, uh, you know, for us, it's just, I mean, as I would said before, it's, you know, I'm not the best guitar player. I'm definitely not the best singer. You know, we're not, but we're not trying to be. That's all irrelevant. It's about songs, and it's about, you know, being real. And, I mean, you can, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of bands that are a lot prettier than us, of course, and they play faster, or they sell more records, or whatever. But it don't get any more real. You can't get any more real than what we're doing. Because, dude, we've given up everything in our entire life to do, to ride in a van sometimes, you know, for six weeks, and make no money, but to just deliver the goods and that's real 